Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Today is the seventh Sunday after Trinity and whether you're joining with us on Sunday or if you're catching up with us later on in the week it is a pleasure and a privilege to be able to welcome you here as we join together for our online worship. A few things to share before we get started. Uh, as of last week, uh, all three of our church centres are open again on a Sunday morning. So you will be able to join us in person, should you choose to, at 9.30 at the Emmanuel Church Centre, at 10.45 at St Mary's in Hawkshaw, or at 11 o'clock at Emmanuel in Holcombe. To go alongside that, these online services will continue throughout the summer so that those of us who are perhaps shielding for a little longer or who are just a little bit unsure about going back to church at this time can still worship together as part of this community here in Holcomb and Hawkshaw. Either way, do check out this link on our website. It will tell you all of the steps that we have done to make our buildings COVID secure and you can download a copy of our What to Expect leaflet which will talk you through a few of the changes that we've had to make in terms of social distancing and all that kind of thing so that you know what it'll be like when you do come into one of our church buildings for the first time since lockdown. On Wednesday evening this week, we have our Zoom with a brew meeting. Do drop an email to this email address if you would like to head over to that and we will email over the link to you later on in the week. And today, well today marks the beginning of our summer series. Obviously this year with lockdown, we can't have uh, holiday clubs and that kind of thing, which we usually would. So instead what we thought we would do is we would dedicate the next four weeks to looking together at the book of Daniel. Do pay attention as we go through the service. There are some puppets who will help us understand what's going on and Every week for the next four weeks, there will be a craft activity to go along with what we learn from the book of Daniel. If you would like to take part in those craft activities, drop an email to Paul at this email address and he will arrange sending out a craft pack to you. And after the service this morning, if you check out our YouTube channel, you will find that there are some videos on there to tell you everything you need to know about how to do the craft for this week. But as we come together to worship God this morning, we pray together. O oh Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn this morning, Blessed Be Your Name. Thank you. 
And we come together to our time of confession. Whenever we come before God, those words that Paul shared with the church in Rome, they ring out to us. There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. There is no one who does good, not even one. So as we examine ourselves before God this morning, in a moment of quiet, we bring before him all of those things this week for which we need his forgiveness. All of those ways that we know that our lives haven't lived up to the glory that he sets before us. We bring them before God now. So trusting to the grace and the mercy of God, let us return to the Lord our God and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Whenever we do come before God and ask for his forgiveness, we have those amazing promises before us that through the cross of Jesus Christ and his rising again from the grave, we can trust that we can be truly forgiven because there God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So trusting that everything that the love of God has done for us, we remember these words of absolution. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I think some of our puppet friends are going to help us understand what is happening in Daniel chapter 1. Are we ready to start? Everyone's waiting. Oh, good. Is it me? Am I on? No, no, it's not you. You're not on till chapter six. Oh, hello. Let me introduce myself. I'm Lionel. Get down. I told you, it's not you yet. Well, that's not fair. Whose story is this anyway? You're not on till chapter six. It's only right after time on first. Just remember who's the king around here. Everybody knows that the lion is the king of the beasts. <clears throat> I think you'll find that I am the king around here, not you. What? Who are you? You're a bit thin on top to be a real king. I can assure you that I am the most powerful king there is. The name is Nebuchadnezzar. Don't forget it. That's spelt N-E-B-D, no, U, um, uh, U, C, um, D, something, Z, Z, uh, mm, or something. Anyway, it's King Nebuchadnezzar, King of Babylonia and everywhere else. So, sling your rook. We'll see who's king. He's still thin on top. Crown or no crown. Hmm. Now, let's see. Where can we invade today? Hmm, I wonder. I've already taken Jerusalem under my control, and I've helped myself to some of the treasures from their temple. Just a few silver cups and things, very nice. I've put them in my trophy cabinet. Ooh, what about bringing some of those young Hebrew lads back to my court to work for me? Ha, huh, what an excellent idea even though I say so myself. Ashpenaz! I've got a job for you. I'm on it, your majesty. Good. I can't wait to see who he brings. You lads are just what King Nebuchadnezzar is looking for. You are going to learn to speak the Babylonian language and learn all about our culture, our way of life and our gods. We will also give you new names. So which one are you? I'm Daniel. Right. I'm going to call you Belteshazzar. You can call me what you like, 
that I will always be Daniel. What was that? Uh, pity I couldn't bring my spaniel. No, no dogs allowed, I'm afraid. Okay, from now on, ye three will be called Shadrach, Misha, and Abednego. Have you got that? Yes, yes sir. sir. You and the other young men are going to receive training so that you'll be ready to enter the service of our great king Nebuchadnezzar in three years' time. So, in order that you will become fit and strong, the king has assigned you special food and wine from his own table. Here it is. Come and eat. But sir, there are all sorts of food here which God has told us we must not eat. Such foods are unclean and we would be unfaithful to God if we broke his rules. Don't be silly. Everyone's got to eat. If you don't eat, you'll starve to death. We can just eat the vegetables. We won't eat the meat and we will only drink water. God will look after us. But it is essential that you eat the food the king has provided, but you won't be as fit and healthy as all the other young men. Why don't you just let us give it a try? Allow us to eat nothing but vegetables, and after ten days, you can judge for yourself if we are as fit as anyone else. Well, I'm not sure. Come on. Do we have a deal? Okay, deal. Report back to me in ten days' time. Have you seen what this lot are eating? Peppers, carrots, broccoli, broccoli? Yuck, I don't do vegetables. I like meat. I like a nice sirloin steak, rare or medium rare, perhaps with a little bit of mustard on the side. Hmm, I'm making myself hungry. I wonder if there's anything in the fridge. Well, what do you think? Well, we've eaten no new vegetables, nothing else. Wow, I'm impressed. You all look great. Well, from now on, you can forget the king's food and just stick with the Brussels sprouts or whatever it is you've been eating. Mm. I really am surprised that you can survive on vegetables alone and keep that fit. But we are not alone, are we? God is with us. Who is this God you keep going on about? God is the one who loves us, who makes us strong, and who gives us wisdom. <coughs> oh dear. Oh, is that dream again? I keep on having that same dream. I wish I could get a good night's sleep. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh. There it is again. I get it every night and I don't know what it means. Oh, I think someone's trying to tell me something. But what? Nothing for it. Fetch me my magicians and sorcerers! They need to tell me what's going on in my dreams, in my head. And am I going mad? You called, your majesty. Yes, I need you to tell me what's going on in my dream. I get the same one every night. What does it mean? Perhaps, your majesty, would like to describe the dream to us and we would be able to interpret it for you. Mm, no. No, I expect you to tell me what my dream is all about. I shouldn't need to tell you. You are the magicians. But, but, your majesty, we cannot explain your dream to you if you do not tell, tell us what it is. Hmm. Do you not consider yourselves to be the wisest men in all of the kingdom? Yes, your majesty. Indeed, you will find none wiser than me. <laughs> With the exception, your majesty, of myself, of course. I have an unequal ability 
to interpret dreams. Good! So, interpret my dream, or you will be put to death. Your Majesty, there is no magician or sorcerer alive who can explain the meaning of a dream if they do not know what the dream is. You are all frauds, the lot of you. Get out of my sight. Ha! Huh. God, I want all the magicians, sorcerers, enchanters, astrologers, and self-appointed wise guys put to death. And you can include all those young Hebrew men in that order as well. Yes, Your Majesty. As you command, Your Majesty. Have you heard? We are all to be executed. Ah. The king has been having strange dreams, and he expects his wise men to guess what the dreams are. Never mind tell him what they mean. But only God knows what goes on in a man's thoughts and dreams. No mere mortal can ever be that wise. How right you are, Shadrach. All wisdom comes from God. King Nebuchadnezzar trusts in his silly false gods and tricksters and con artists who pretend they have magic powers. If only the king would learn to love God and trust him. We should all pray that God gives us the wisdom to explain the dream to him. Then maybe he will spare us from death. Yes, Daniel. We must pray very hard. And then perhaps you would be able to go to Nebuchadnezzar and help him. Your Majesty, I understand that I and my three friends have been condemned to death along with your magicians and sorcerers. However, I have come before you today in order to explain your troublesome dream to you. Excellent! So what makes you able to do this when no one else can? Your Majesty, it is not through my own ability that I can do this, but through the wisdom given to me by God in a vision. Well, go on then. Put me out of my misery. In your dream, you saw a dazzling giant statue with a head of gold, a body of silver, thighs of bronze, and legs and feet of iron and clay. That's right, I did. Go on. Then a rock appeared and struck the statue on the feet, and the statue fell over and broke into pieces. Then the pieces of the statue blew away, and the rock turned into a huge mountain which filled the whole world. That's exactly how it was. So what does it mean? Well, Your Majesty, your kingdom is represented by the head of gold, but after you will come three more kingdoms. Those are the silver bit, the bronze bit, and the iron and clay bit. However, all of those kingdoms will be destroyed and replaced by a kingdom which can never be destroyed. And that is the rock which becomes the mountain. So what is this kingdom that will never be destroyed? Your Majesty, that kingdom is the kingdom of heaven, and God is the king in the kingdom of heaven, and it is God who has enabled me to reveal the meaning of the dream to you. You and your God have made me a very happy man. I'm going to reward you by putting you in charge of all of my wise men. And I will make your three friends, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, officials in my kingdom of Babylon. Well, what did you think of that? Despite only eating vegetables, they're all still alive. Perhaps next week we'll discover how they get on in Babylon. See you then! And now Liz will bring us our reading for this week. The reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 to 9. Children, obey your parents as the Lord wants, because this is the right thing to do. The command says, honour your father and mother. This is the first command that has a promise with it. Then everything will be well with you and you will have a long life on the earth. Fathers, do not make your children angry, but raise them with the training and teaching of the Lord. Slaves, obey your masters here on earth with fear and respect and from a sincere heart, just as you obey Christ. 
You must do this, not only while they are watching you, to please them. With all your heart, you must do what God wants as people who are obeying Christ. Do your work with enthusiasm. Work as if you were serving the Lord, not as if you were serving only men and women. Remember that the Lord will give a reward to everyone, slave or free, for doing good. Masters, in the same way, be good to your slaves. Do not threaten them. Remember that the one who is your master and their master is in heaven and he treats everyone alike. And our next song, before we hear from Paul, is New, New Day. Thank you, Father, for today. Teach me how to choose your way. Help me lift my eyes to see who you are. You are faithful, always true Every good thing comes from you Meet me in your word and help me worship you It's a new, new day To sing your praise It's a new, new day To walk in your ways It's a new, new day To make you known It's a new, new day To see your I wonder, when it comes to food, whether there are things to which your instant reaction is Ugh! or something like that. Perhaps it's something like Lionel, broccoli or sprouts. Or perhaps it's something that we don't tend to eat in this country, like lizards or snails or rats. I once had a snail pizza in France, which was interesting, very garlicky. Slightly chewy. Daniel takes one look at the king's food and thinks, yuck, no thank you. So what was he doing there in the first place? Well, this was a time when everything seemed to have gone wrong. The great city of Jerusalem, spiritual home of the people of God, had been defeated. King Jehoiakim had been captured the temple ransacked, 
and the leaders, movers and shakers have been removed from Jerusalem. And that included a young man named Daniel and his three friends. And so the great King Nebuchadnezzar set up a sort of university in his capital city of Babylon. He wanted to teach Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah how to be good Babylonians. Uh, and so he, got, he wanted them to leave behind their own religion and culture. He wanted to use the Babylonian culture to cement together his new and expanding empire, creating unity under his rule. We've been spending the summer looking with Ruth at various universities around the country. Uh, in these days of lockdown, they haven't been doing open days in the usual way, but they have uh, been doing open days online. Uh, and those usually starting with a talk by someone important, a uh, professor of this or that, and then opening up a chat room so that you can ask them questions to find out more about the different courses on offer the accommodation, whether they're self-catered or have meals provided, etc. So I wondered what an open day for Daniel's course might look like. Welcome to Babylonian Central University, here in these hanging gardens. We have just the course for you and only the best food accommodation and teachers in the empire. We are sure you will study hard and get a first class education at this premier institution. So we hope to welcome you to your new home soon. And now for the small print. Failure to graduate with first class honours will result in you meeting the lions. Failure to comply with any of our instructions will result in a trip to the lions. Failure to take on the religion, rules, names given in compliance with GDPR legislation will result in a no expenses paid trip to the lions. So over to you for your questions and have a nice day. Yes. I'm here to answer your questions. So, uh, yes, yeah, the first question is, what courses do we offer? Uh, yes, just the one actually, uh, that's Babylonian Studies. Uh, but if you fail that, we do offer a short course in zoology. Next question, yes, 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 the, the halls are fully catered. Uh, we have snails on toast for breakfast, lizard medley for lunch, and roast rat for your evening meal. They're only the best at Babylonian Central University. Cultural and religious freedom? Uh, no, no. Here at Ashpenaz Hall, you will fully embrace the Babylonian culture, religion and traditions. Uh, unless you want to do our very short course in lion's teeth inspections. No, no. Uh, and we will give you new names to help you to remember that you belong to us now. Right, so that's enough of the nicey-nicey. Get yourselves into class immediately! So Daniel and his friends, without much choice in the matter, had their names changed. The L bit at the end of Daniel and the I bits at the end of their names meant of God. So their name changes were ways of trying to remove their sense of identity as God's people. Uh, and they were given studies in the Babylonian religion and language. But back home in Israel, their parents had given them a firm foundation early in life of what it meant to be children of God. One of the other things I've been doing this summer is building a summer house, and here we are in it now. Uh, the building itself came flat packed and went up in a day, more or less. What took me a while longer was building the foundations, the base for it all to stand on. Happily, there was a good start left behind by Bishop David Gillett uh, when he used to live here, but it needed extending and flattening out and firming up. Uh, and so I firm finally learnt how to make concrete uh, and mortar and how to build walls so that the base was as flat and as solid as I could get it. When Daniel and friends went to Babylon, they held on to the foundations that had been laid before. They recognised that in order to get on, they were going to have to do some things to fit in with the land they were enslaved in uh, and to follow the directions given. But they also negotiated with their captors so that they would not eat the food that was contrary to Jewish food laws 
uh, more likely pork than snails, uh, even if that meant learning to like broccoli or something similar. It was, in a sense, um, that sort of sense of this far, but no further. So yes, I'll compromise on that, and yes, I'll compromise on that, but these are the things which are really vital to me, to my sense of identity as uh, belonging to God, of part of my following him, of being able to live for him day by day. Uh, and so when it came to the food bits, he said, this is what it means to be followers of God. We will not compromise on this. Today, like Daniel, we live in a world where things are not as they should be. We see the pain around us and we're drawn this way and that by the social norms of our culture, some of which pull us away from God's call on our lives and his directions as seen in his word in the Bible. We too need to have a sense of the things that we need to hold on to in order to honour God in our situations, particularly when God's word seems to clash with the culture of the world around us. So the more solid the foundations, the firmer will be the building that we build on top. While we're looking at Daniel, we will also have some readings from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, uh, and I hope that you'll see some of the parallels. Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus to give them some help on how to live as God's people, uh, how to live for God in a world that is messed up by inhumanity and our own rebellion against God. So Paul was writing from prison. He's not saying that all the things that were commonplace then were right. Uh, he's not saying that he wanted to be in prison. He, everything was indeed messed up for him too. But alongside that, he knew that God was with him. That despite the hardships and difficulties, that he had God on his side. And sometimes the things around us are not right, and it was the same for him then, uh, such as slavery. Uh, but in that place, we can also hold on to the things that help us to live for God, despite the situations we find ourselves in. And so his instructions for slaves might find their outlet today if you find yourself working for a difficult employer work diligently all of the time, even when you're not being watched, he says. Similarly, his instructions for masters direct those of us who are employers to have a proper respect for those who work for us, remembering that we're all equal in the sight of God. And then Paul is revolutionary in his sense of the importance of family life and in laying good foundations and mutual respect between the generations. These then are some of the building blocks that he puts in place. And uh, along with Daniel, he says, essentially, go this far, but don't go any further. Hold on to these things which are vital to, to that sense of being uh, loved by God, of being able to walk in that love and in that grace. And as you hold on to those things, God will hold on to you, even when life gets really hard. Um, going on from there, we then have the story of uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream of Daniel being in the right place and being there at the right time in order to uh, be able to hear from the God who sees everything so that uh, he could cut through the stuff that the astrologers came up with and say, actually, this is your dream. This was what God showed you. This is his plan for what will happen from here on. And indeed, uh, the story continues. So Daniel's story beyond this is one of real interest and intrigue as he uh, serves different kings and emperors at different moments. But it's also one that teaches us about serving God even in difficult times. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you for your love for us today. We thank you that you care for us and hold us in your heart. And we pray that you would help us to follow you each day. 
to know your strength in difficult moments and to work out what we need to hold on to, that you would be given all grace in our lives and that we would honour you day by day. Amen. And remembering that by one spirit we are one body, we affirm our one faith together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and who makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our next song, before Jean leads us in our prayers, is King of Kings, Majesty. We know, Lord, even in the darkest moments, love gives hope. As we pray in church or our own homes, we are united as one family. So let us pause and find a moment of peace as we lift up our hearts together in prayer. When I say, Lord, in you we trust, Please respond, we look to you for help. 
God our Father, we pray for your church across the world. We pray for those who witness in places where the Christian faith is forgotten or ignored. For those persecuted for their faith in East India, Pakistan, South Sudan, amongst many other countries. On Sunday, the 19th of July, a church in Sri Lanka was attacked by extremists. And Christians in Turkey are living in fear of increasing hostility. We hold them in our prayers. We give thanks, Lord, for pastors, church planters and evangelists who serve you in the face of opposition and violence. May the Holy Spirit equip and empower them for ministry and provide for their practical needs. Protect them, Lord, from attacks from the majority community, harassment from the authorities and unjust penalties for their service to you. We pray for fruit, fruitful ministries with lives transformed by the gospel of Christ and churches strengthened to face persecution with courage and perseverance. Closer to home, we thank you for church leaders who have continued to provide platforms for worship at this difficult time. Especially here in our own parish, where we've been blessed by Paul, Joe, Ruth, Caleb and Isaac. And all those who have worked to ensure our worship can continue. We pray for individuals who have provided inspiration for our own faith. And we thank you for those who have a gift for sharing the gospel. Heavenly Father, give us the courage and willingness to be your witnesses in ways that are generous and respectful, which come from our love for you. Fill us with your love so that the world may believe. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. Each day we see and hear new stories of suffering across the world. God our Father, we remember before you the world's great needs and unnoticed sorrows. The plights of those living in Yemen, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Syria, countries ravaged by war and now faced with the global pandemic of coronavirus. Political unrest in Hong Kong and China. The ongoing hurt, humiliation and degradation of our black and brown brothers and sisters, which has been highlighted by the Black Lives Matter campaign. During a short period of silence, please bring your own prayers for one world news item which you have seen or heard this week. May your blessing rest on each other's nation, each nation and all its people. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. God our Father, we pray for your nation here in the United Kingdom. As we continue to live in the shadow of coronavirus, our lives still impacted by changes. Father, we seek your wisdom. Be with those in authority making decisions that affect the lives and futures of our families and communities. We pray that they may communicate clearly, truthfully and calmly with each other and with the public and that their messages are received and heeded. May truth and empathy be the touchstones of people 
setting policies for our protection. Lord God, we entrust to you all affected by coronavirus, wherever they may be. We pray for healthcare workers that you may guide and protect them. We remember other key workers who have continued to work throughout the pandemic to maintain vital services. We pray that your spirit might inspire those researching new medicines and treatments. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work, many will be restored to health. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. God our Father, we pray for the spiritual health and welfare of our communities, for our parish here in Holcombe and Hawkshaw, that we may be a spiritual family, a household of faith, where people are welcomed and nourished. We pray for our social community, of which we are part. The coronavirus pandemic has brought many of us closer to our neighbours. May the harmony and goodwill continue to bring us closer and give us opportunity to share your good news. We pray for all who lead and make decisions across our local community. We pray for our neighbouring communities with the threat of coronavirus is heeding difficult decisions. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. God our Father, we pray for our family and friends. We thank you for those people who sustain us by their love and forgiveness. Thank you for the network of people with whom our lives are inextricably linked and who make up the fabric of our family and community life. Make us alert to each other's needs and quick to serve and encourage one another. May our gentleness with each other reflect your gentleness with us. In a few moments of silence, we bring before you now our special situations and special people with expectancy in our prayers. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. And the collect for the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as a mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And bringing all of our prayers together, we share in that prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final song for this week
And so, whatever this week might bring, I do pray that you would know the presence of God walking beside you day by day. And I do wish you every blessing that walking alongside our Lord Jesus Christ can bring. And this morning, why don't we end by sharing the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.